He was, and it turns out he was on the first season of Big Brother. Yeah. Uh, Afghanistan. Af- Afghanistan, Afghanistan Big, Big Brother. Big Brother. <laughs> I think if you're in Afghanistan, your last name can actually be Kardashian. That's the, that's the second <laughs> Hamlet you took. Like, we're moving forward to Kardashian. Yeah, all right. Surround Kardashian, and we'll move on from there. Uh, I'm always amazed, like, when I see documentaries like Armadillo and, um, God, what's the Ford operating base that they named after the guy? Oh, shoot. Oh, it was a documentary. Yeah. Um, it was an Italian name. Stripo. Stra- uh, Strapo. No. Uh, Strapo. Close. Strepo. We'll get to it. We'll tighten this up. I, I, this I saw poor this. guy I gave his life. Absolutely. Like, I, can't I, remember I feel bad name. that I've... They I've, named a base after him, and the two of us are going, uh, uh, what, uh, Strepo, Ford Operating Strep- Base documentary. Uh, Strepo. Was it something like that. But I was, we'll, we'll, we'll put it up, and we'll tell everybody what it is, because it's amazing to watch. But I didn't know how much you guys in Afghanistan had to actually pay village men respeto no Restre- restrepo it was it's restrepo or something it's re Re-fucking fucking fictionary I think here? you're right is right restrepo or something like that restrepo what is it andrew I, I, try re put a re i do a lot it. of fucking favors for you don't i <laughs> you fucking stuttering brick pull up the fucking fob <laughs> <laughs> fucking in this Restrepo. Restrepo is what I said, right? Did I say that at we, all? No, we were saying Strepo or something, but it's Re, Restrepo. Restrepo right. Right. is a guy who was in the Ford operating base. He got killed, and they named it after him. And the name of the documentary is Re Strepo. Yeah. It's incredible. It's powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. And I didn't realize how uh, much bureaucracy there is with villagers coming up to you guys going... Hey, that last, uh, you know, when your helicopters came by with the army guys, the rangers came over and they just strafed everything. I lost two cows, man. You, you know, those cows are worth a half million dollars. Well, that was and my job. You, my job was public affairs, civil affairs. So, so that's what you I, did. That's what I did. I and went you got to sit in those, sit around and the elders sit there with their fucking pink right. beards. And you drink their tea and you talk to them about. They should have spiked your tea and made you trip balls, <laughs> and you would have handed them all the money, all the MREs, but yeah, and that's, your camera. That, that's what that was my one of my jobs was civil affairs, public affairs. I dealt with the Walking I dealt with the media, and I dealt with the local population, and we tried to help them with their infrastructure, try to build roads and hospitals and things like that. Schools. Specifically, when they come to you for money, walk us through one of those situations. Well, a lot Even of if it's a hypothetical. Well, it depends on what we're trying to do. It depends on you know if it's if it's part of the bigger plan. I lost two cows. He did, says, did some, we do it? Did someone, we do it? Yeah. Someone has to come to you and translate for the guy. Sure. And if we, if, we're respo- if we did something like that and we're responsible for it, then, yeah, we'll probably take care of it. We'll probably pay the guy with, for the loss or whatever of his cows. Or, but it just depends on, you know, there has to be, otherwise you can get a lot of fraudulent claims, obviously. And did you, you notice get, when you're doing your job? Yeah, because if someone comes in and says, hey, you guys did this, we're like, we weren't even in your sector and we haven't been there for weeks. When did this happen? You said what eighty two. Yeah, exactly. So, but a lot of times too, you know, it Baba Booey, on, and they just it, leave. It depends on what they need. A lot of what we do in civil affairs is uh, work with non governmental organizations, NGOs, the Red Cross, uh, Peace Winds out of Japan. You know, these people that come in and, and try to help uh, local populations in, in third world countries. Um, we make a, a nice, secure, safe environment so that these organizations can come in and do their work. Because they can't come in and do their work unless it's safe. And they won't come in and do their work unless it's safe. In your travels, have you seen firsthand... I've been told the Red Cross is about as real as shit could possibly get. Like, when you put money to the Red Cross, like, that is a blanket that gets put on a body. Like, the, as far as pure money yeah. getting tied up in, yeah. like, paying secretaries, that's not the case with the Red Cross. As far as I know, that's, that's the case. I think when you're, I think you're right. Because they, I mean, and the work they do globally is truly amazing. They really do put, like you said, bodies on, uh, blankets on bodies. And uh, they, do, they do really, really good work, from what I understand. And what I've seen, too, in those countries. They, they, uh, they're on mission. They do a good job. We were on the set of Gary Unmarried, and there was a scene where Rob Riggle takes my son, played by Ryan Malgarini, one of the funniest <laughs> kids alive. Yeah, great kid. Um, great man. He's a man now. I know, he looked like Andre Ethier. Somebody <laughs> tweeted me once, like, that kid that plays your son looks like Andre Ethier, and he did. Uh, you guys, you take him out one night in the script, and you take him out in your old Humvee to meet your Marine buddies. 
and there's like some type of accident and like he's got fast food and there's ketchup all over the dashboard. You think you've killed him. <laughs> it's like a wacky, you know, oh, yeah. I forgot about that until you just mentioned it. And there's a Hummer, there's a Humvee on the stage. I think we're on stage 10 at um, CBS Radford. Yeah. And Riggle and I are just standing around like drinking coffee, just shooting shit. Yeah. Uh, and you, you just pointed, I'll never forget this, and I, I don't think I've ever shared this with you. You pointed to the seat behind the passenger seat in the Humvee, and you said, that was my office for six months, man. Huh? I said, what? You go, six months. I go, what? You go, that was my office right there. And I, I was like, what? You go, that, that where you put your ass right there <laughs> was my office for six months. And it was just a guy that I'd been joking with for months where I don't, I guess I can convey to the listener, you don't realize how real and every day it is. And a lot of people listening have family members in the armed services, but just my friend Rob pointing to a seat and you said, and you said the guy's name that sat in the passenger seat and you said, yeah, I sat right behind Sergeant May. I don't, what, I don't remember the name. Yeah. Just sat right there. Six months, man, right there. Yeah. And I go, I, I just, I don't know. I just really, there's no, the point of the story is that fucked my head up. Did it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't There's a to. guy just hang in a great way. Okay. In a, while wow, these guys do extraordinary things. Yeah. And they don't come home. Like <laughs> me walking through the bar in my dress blues and shiny shoes going, <laughs> woo, it's hot as Iraq out there. I am so thirsty, but I got no money. I got robbed in Afghanistan by the Kardashians <laughs> after I took the picture. Whereas you're a guy on a set on a TV show and you literally just, there happened to be a Humvee there. Yeah. And you went, that was my office for six months. <laughs> like that's where you sat yeah. for six months. And I don't know. I didn't know it was going to go this way, but thank you. Oh, well, thanks. That's very nice of you to say, man. I appreciate it. That. It really knocked me out. Well, I only... Yeah. Well, thanks. You I'll told me. Do you remember the story you told me about the kid holding the uh, IED? Oh, yeah. Well, it was a cluster bomb. All right. Explain what a cluster bomb is. It's a... Uh, this was in Kosovo, correct? That's in Kosovo, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's A cluster bomb is a, a bomb that... It's not one solid bomb. It's a bomb that when it once dropped... Uh, the skin of the bomb actually peels off and it drops about 500 little bomblets, little tiny bombs. It's like a video game bomb. Yeah, and so it just covers a huge area. It's a, it's a big area weapon. And, uh, you know, like if there was a... Does it explode on uh, contact or something? You can, it can be done different ways. You can have it for air burst. You can have it for contact burst. You can have it set all kinds of different ways. Um, and it's like if you saw a huge battalion in the open, you know, 500 soldiers coming at you... You could drop one cluster bomb and they're all gone. Wow. Um, you know, same thing. It can disable vehicles. You know, it's just it's a huge area weapon. Uh, and when uh, during the air war in Kosovo, we had dropped some cluster bombs. Um, and oftentimes uh, those clusters, those little bomblets don't go off. They'll they'll just unexploded ordnance. It happens all the time. I believe the official word is a dud. A dud. A dud. <laughs> yeah. Roman candle. These are duds, man. <laughs> This is bullshit. Yeah. All right. I'm good money for this cluster bomb. I, I stashed one over here in the sand trap. Did you always have, uh, my, my fireworks <laughs> wars were always on a golf course. No. Oh, we always did golf course wars. Oh, and like, defend the third green. <laughs> and we, we just had sticks. We never actually lit anything. Uh, we had, we actually took like piping and we get the like hoses and like, uh, and stuff. So mine looked like a cane. It had a handle. <laughs> So if I held it up, I could drop a, a bottle rocket down the tube and hold it like this. So when it fired, the back blast would actually blow out the front because of the, the way it curved around like a cane. Adam Ferrara sat there and he said he did it. With, he'd put Roman candles in the, in the hole of the wiffle ball bat. See? Smart. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. You and Ferrara got to get together. Yeah. <laughs> we had elaborate wars. Cause, and my, my little thing, uh, my little bottle rocket launcher, was, it was so narrow that it actually made the bottle rocket just super accurate. Like I could peg people <laughs> from like 20 yards. I'd and they do. don't really explode. It's a really neat weapon because you, really, you can dot people. Yeah. It's not like a firecracker where like, then they lose their pinky. Well, I remember like, one, You're I, an asshole, man. I only have four fingers I had you. a buddy, Terry Mahajer. I'll tell you his name. He was coming through. He was running between two houses, coming onto the onto the fairway. I dropped to a knee and I just I put I put a hot one right on the inside of his leg. It hit him because he tried to jump out of the way like this, and it just hit him right here. And the thrust of the thing just kept it stuck to his leg, so he couldn't. And it it blew, and he had a nice big just 
right there. Wait, the Roman candles explode, or don't they just like shoot? Well, I'm talking fizzle? about bottle rockets on this oh, one. Oh, bottle, bottle rockets. rockets. Um, they I certainly have... explode. Yeah, and then Roman candles are great because that just makes people haul ass. And then, of course, you launch, throw a couple. And this is in Kansas, a golf course in Kansas, oh, which yeah. is probably in use two months out of the year. <laughs> and it happens to be during the 4th of July weekend that it's in the, yeah. Kosovo, uh, was it a roadblock? Oh, sorry. So, yeah, so it was, uh, so we were down, we had just finished a patrol down in, in Kosovo, and we were coming back to our forward operating base. And uh, I happened to be with, just, it was crazy, I just happened to be in a Humvee with, um, the explosive ordnance disposal, the EOD guys, uh, and they, and I don't know if they were Marines or if they were Navy. I, I, I forget. But anyway, we, as we rolled up onto the uh, uh, this checkpoint before we got to our our, our FOB, the uh, the sentry, you know, the Marine at the at the gate, came up and said, "Hey, uh, I heard you guys are EOD," and they were like, "The guys in the home, were, yeah, yeah, I got something I want you guys to look at." So everybody kind of got out of the vehicle and we walked up and. Uh, uh, I'll never forget the EOD guy, uh, explosive ordnance guy, looked at it and goes, whoa. He goes, his face just kind of went, he was shocked. And these guys don't get shocked. And he was like, how did that get there? And uh, the, the guard was like, well, this kid came up with it in his hand. And, I, you know, I didn't know what it was. So I told him to just put it down and get away from it. And, I mean, the guy turned white. The EOD guy turned white. And he's like, that's a that's a bomblet. That's a that's a cluster bomb thing. That. That should have blown, like, you know, some kid was handling it, you know, found it in a field and brought it up to the, and the Marine had enough common sense to say, that doesn't look right. Put it down and get away from it. So everybody just cleared away. Well, they couldn't touch it again. The EOD guys were like, I'm not touching that thing. So what they did was they built uh, a sand, huge sandbag bunker around it and put in a little C4 with a casting bla uh, blasting cap or some, some sort of explosive device and they just blew it in place right there. They never touched it again because they, it was too, volatile to be handled again so uh i mean it's you nice know. of the century to call other marines closer to it <laughs> hey yeah look hey what guys, i almost stepped in <laughs> this looks like a bomb will you come over here good thing yeah smell this yeah this smell does this smell explosive to you <laughs> shake it what's in it uh does, and does it sound like a bomb uh so all-star game you were not at because you're hosting the SBs, making fun of anthony davis's eyebrows yes <laughs> your buddy uh, Billy Butler not chosen for home run derby. Were you outraged? A little bit because I like Kansas Billy. City Royal. Billy fan. is a good guy. He's a good guy, and he strokes it. He's got he's got some uh, he's got the country breakfast right. <laughs> is that his nickname? <laughs> yeah, if it isn't, it is now. It, no, I, it is. I I, I'm pretty sure country, okay, country breakfast because like he's, he's a big one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's a sweet guy too. I went down to Royals spring training this year. Yeah, and got to spend some time with those guys. That's and a fan. They got they got. It's hard great. enough to go to Royals regular season games. <laughs> you actually go to spring training to see the guys that don't make the Royals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but hey, guys, Will Myers. <laughs> now we're going to make him wait for reasons unknown. Well, to you would love this. You would love this as much as a, a baseball fanatic as you are, and as much knowledge as you have. You would love this. I they let me take a few strokes, right? And the, I got to take a little bad, a little BP. Never goes as far as you think it's gonna. And I, I'm, you know, I'm. I'm putting everything I got into it, you know, and uh, George Brett, my my idol since I was a child. Number five? Yeah, number five, George Brett. And uh, Hall of Famer is it holds uh, batting titles in three decades, 70s, mm -hmm. 80s, and 90s. And um, he, uh, he, I come out of the cage, and he's like, all right, here's, wh here's what we're going to do. And he gave me a batting lesson. And I was like, what? And he's like, you're yeah, a righty, loosen right? up your hands. Yeah, loosen so up your hands. So he can hand. stand across from you. You can actually copy him because you're a righty. He's a left. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a switch. I think he's a switch hitter. I don't remember. But he, um, anyway, he gave me a lesson. I went back in for my second round and I started tattooing him. Oh, really? I mean, that's all it took was a little, he just gave me enough tweaks. And when I say tattooing him, I mean like one or two hops to the warning track. But still, I mean, I was. See, I, when I clear the infield, I get giddy. <laughs> and I've taken batting practice yeah. where it's like, you know, they run it up there about 70. Yeah. And I swing. And it like if I can get like a Texas League single distance, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would see. I'd be like, guess who's on base in the major leagues? Riggle, because I just stroked it. And it would always be a Texas, Texas leaguer. It'd always be just past the infield, but short of the outfield. Uh, more stories, veteran Jeremy Guthrie just got traded to your team. Really? And uh, he's been on the show as he's losing his pitcher in baseball two years in a row. And this year he was in uh, Denver, and it wasn't going well. 
and he's got ten losses already. So he might get it three years in a row, uh, which would be incredible. And some they traded him for Jonathan Sanchez straight up. And somebody on Twitter said the Royals and Rockies just exchanged gas cans. <laughs> this, this salient. But we, have, I'm telling you, the Royals, we have great young talent. Yeah, I love Moustakis at third. Moustakis, I love Will Myers. Hossamer. Came to my show at the Midland Theater. Who did? Will Myers. Oh, no.